Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God who loves us with a true, a really true agape love. He's the God who never changes. He's the one who has always been and always will be. And he loves us so completely. He wants us to come so close to him. Close enough to kiss. <laughs> I like saying it like that. Close enough to kiss because he is our life. Breath was given to us. This body was made and shaped. It was formed for us. This is our temporary dwelling place. One day we're going to have a new body. A glorious body. We are going to be, or should I say it like this, we're going to have the presence of the Lord with us forever. No more sin, no more sorrow, no more death, sickness, disease, nothing that is called the curse, the curse that is in this life, that that is separated from God because, see, God is holy. And all of those things death and sickness, disease and hatred and bitterness. All that stuff is part of this earth where sin has invaded. Sin invaded and, and we lived in it for a time. We are no longer of this world. We're the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus who died and rose again. He is our life. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about Enoch and how Enoch was a friend of God. He he talked with God. He walked with God. He was a friend to the Lord every single day. He acknowledged God in all of his ways. I'm sure he messed up sometimes, but he quickly turned his heart and mind around and, and sought the Lord in all things. He had a family. He had a wife. He had a job. He had life. He didn't have the internet like we do. <laughs> That can get you in all kinds of troubles. It can open all kinds of windows and doors for you. But he still had trouble in his life because he was in this world. Enoch was a human being just like any one of us with emotions and feelings and thoughts. And the devil was after him just as much as he's after us. The curse was already in operation in the world. Sin was already trying to run the show. But Enoch had faith toward God, and he didn't turn his, his life away from God and try to hide sin. In fact, he talked to the Lord every day. He sang songs to the Lord every day. And probably at night when he laid his head down, he couldn't get the thought of the Father out of his life. In fact, he didn't want to. He wanted to hold on to him tight. Because he understood the creator that created everything and everything. I mean, every single thing. Seen yet not seen. Heard yet not heard was created by God and for God. We were created by God and for God. And he is our life. We have life and peace because he sent his son. <laughs> He sent us a Savior, so we don't have to rely on ourselves to try to manifest a peace. But God has sent His peace into our heart. If we understand we are His, and we take hold of the fact that He is and that we are His, that, that peace that surpasses all understanding seems to have such a ground in you that there's no situation that can frustrate you to the point of turning away from the living God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 and 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, but those who believe that God exists. Hmm? Did I just say that wrong? But we have to have faith that God exists. It's 
in you. It's in your heart. It's in your DNA. <laughs> But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he exists, that God is, and that he rewards them that diligently seek him. He rewards us who would truly come after who he is, who desire him with all their heart. I desire God with all my heart. And anything that comes against the knowledge of who God is in my life, I have to cast it down. And I'm not talking about physically taking people and throwing them on the ground or throwing them out windows and all that. But every high thought, every thought that rises against who God is, I have to destroy that thought. Fear is a real thing and it comes to torment it comes to steal kill and destroy and it starts on your emotions and it wants to come in and it wants to take hold of you so that you will not live the kind of life that Jesus I'm gonna say Jesus has released to us. Jesus has released to us life and life more abundantly. Jesus did it. The Father sent him to bring us into his house. God the Father sent his Son to redeem all mankind. Now it's their choice if they come in or not. But we are the redeemed. We said yes to Christ. Therefore, we come in and get the knowledge of God. We get to know who he is. Remember, there's a scripture that says, to the, there were some people that, how does that go now? They had done all these great works, and yet Jesus looked at them and said, away from me, I never knew you. We need to know, have a relationship with our God, with the Father of heaven and earth, with Jesus Christ the Lord. We need to know him. John chapter 17. This is the way to eternal life. Knowing the one true God and the Son that you've sent into the world, Jesus, the Son of God. We need to know our salvation. God is that salvation. His Son is that salvation. That Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is our salvation. He is... We're, so, we're supposed to be so in God, in Christ. In Christ, in God. <laughs> we're supposed to be so in Christ, in God, that our heart is in such a position where we're in love. We're in true love, real love, rested and fully assured we are the redeemed we are saved we're delivered from all of our fears because the one who set the record straight has set it straight we believe what Jesus said when he said it is finished and as we abide in the truth, as we abide in Christ and abide in the truth, these words rise up to our hearts. And these words, like, like, like what Jesus was speaking to the tempter, they come out of our mouth in every given situation in our lives. We're always in a, in a place of prayer. Always, in a, it's, a, it's just a constant awareness of God and God's presence. God being with you. You are the redeemed of the Lord. You are saved. You belong to Jesus Christ. And no one, nothing, no one, no situation, no circumstance, whatever happens in this life cannot pluck you out of his hand. 
And the only one that can make that decision to get out of the hand of God is you. And it's what you feel about that situation and what you think about that situation. We're so tied up in how we feel about this world's, this world. And I'm not necessarily talking about wars. I'm not necessarily talking about hungry people. I'm not necessarily talking about lights and gas going off all over the world and people starving to death. I'm not necessarily talking about those things. I'm talk What I'm talking about right now is being ready for the day of Jesus Christ. It's, being, it's not even the day of Jesus Christ so much as it's, as it's the bride has made herself ready. Like it says in the in the book of Revelation, it's we are ready to meet the Lord in the air, and fear will hold you down. Hmm? Hatred and bitterness, all types of unforgiveness. I don't care if the slightest person has offended you. Forgive them; they know not what they do. Hold nothing in your heart. That is, a, that is against the mind of God for you. Hmm. Enoch was, was taken alive. If the same thing that happened to Enoch is supposed to happen to us. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. Why? Because we love him. Because we true, I mean, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, you love God. <laughs> this is why I like churches that have the flags and they're moving the flags around and everybody's dancing. Well, maybe not everybody's dancing, but you know what I'm saying. There's a freedom. We're free in Christ and we are definitely free to praise the Lord. We are definitely free to have a thankful heart, a heart of thanksgiving toward God. We truly believe God is and what he's done for us. Are you ready? Let nothing be an idol for you. Nothing, not food, not people, not sons, not daughters, not husband, not wife, not, not any relative, not the church, nobody. And I'm talking about people. <laughs> Or, or, or your pets, whatever you have. Let nothing be greater than God in your life. How do you do that with family? The blood of Jesus. We're praying for them. We're praying for them. We're, we're not lusting after them, trying to make them change their mind. We're not trying to be harsh and hard with them with the word. We're interceding on their behalf, just like Christ has done for us and continues to do. We're, we, we bring that issue up to the Father and we say, Lord, take the hardness off of them. Help them to see you. Set people in their lives today, Lord God, to, to bring them into the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, Lord, protection today. Now, the Holy Spirit will show you what to pray when you don't know how when it's hard and your feelings feel jittery, when you don't know what to pray. God already knew the situation before it happened. He already heard the words. He knew that, cir that circumstance. He, he knew what would become of this. And he knew that it would happen anyway. <laughs> In some of our cases, if I could say that, he knew it was, it was going to happen anyway, regardless of what you did. So we turn to the Father and we say, Father, I don't know how to pray. Show me what to pray in the name of Jesus. And the Yeshua of our heart, <laughs> who knows all things, will, will, will he'll guard our heart and mind. He'll show us what to do. Even bringing you to a Bible verse. Even bringing you a song to sing. Go ahead and just worship the Lord and thank Him for who He is. And watch the God who created all things intervene. Watch Him 
keep your heart and mind while that person goes through their mess. Hmm? Everything's not about us. It's about somebody else's salvation and the hardness that's going on with them, the confusion and that that mindset that they have to go and do things their own way. It's not always your fault. You can't do something about that in the physical sense so much. Besides go make some cookies. I'm going to keep on throwing that one out there. <laughs> do something good. But don't let the evil that's in the world overcome you. Don't let the evil that that, that person is about to step into, don't let it take your heart and mind. God is absolutely able to keep you while they go through their mess because they're walking into, they're coming into their salvation. But how can they see it if you're upset with them? How can they see it if you're upset too over the sin that's in their lives? The Lord who has always, always been, knew what was going to happen before it ever happened. And he knows that there's two scenarios to this. You know, because <laughs> see, mankind's going to be ruled by somebody. If I could say it like that, I could say it like that, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got the kingdom of God and you got the kingdom of the devil. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has come to give life. And there's this 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 fight going on. Not See, Jesus already won the fight. Don't get it wrong. Jesus already won the fight. His purpose was to come and destroy the works of the devil. To break the stronghold. To break the power of the enemy over mankind's soul. And he's done it. He, he has absolutely done it. But the word of truth needs to abide in our heart. And our cares need to be thrust before God. Hannah did it. She wanted a child. She there was no, she could not have children. She had an adversary always mocking her. She had this other lady, she had plenty of children. She had more than enough. And she had the nerve to harass Hannah. Now, that, that's evil for you. She, if anything, she should have felt bad for Hannah and wanted to just, Hannah, it's going to be all right. You know, maybe she could have said something like, Hannah, my kids are your kids. <laughs> I don't know. They lived in the same house. They had the same husband. That's not legal, by the way, so don't try it. <laughs> I mean, she could have been kind, but she wasn't. She was hateful. And, and just evil to Hannah. One day Hannah was sobbing so bad before the Lord. Her desire was so much for God. That she, she asked the Lord, if you give me a child, I will, I will give that child back to you. He will serve you all the days of his life. And the Lord heard her prayer. He, he knew all of this before it ever happened, but the Lord heard her draw near to him and ask for the impossible. And maybe that's what we need to do for our loved ones, those we care about, rather than being bent over and all torn into knots, I mean, pulled into knots for their souls. This third thought comes to mind that weeping may endure may, weeping weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning that weeping that we do put it before God the joy that comes is because you laid your heart out before it God's faithful to you he's faithful to his house we're his house we're, we're God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, and he's not going to let his good works be hindered. So he's got to keep your heart and mind in perfect peace. He's working on your loved ones. Let, him, let them go and go make some cookies. <laughs> go make something. Go do something great. 
even if it's putting a puzzle together and worshiping the Lord with a song in your heart. But be, this is for your sake and my sake, that we be ready to meet Christ in the air. We be ready. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Set those high thoughts down before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't know about this, but you do, and I trust you. Direct my steps today. You are my light and my salvation. You are the strength of my life. And, and just expect the Holy Spirit to show you how to, how to go about this season in your life. Be like Enoch. He was an open book before the Father. He wasn't closed up trying to hide things and trying to hold on to stuff that was too high for him. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. This says that, I, I, I think that says it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Verse 6. And um, James. Chapter 4. The power of God is living in you. The strength of the Almighty is right there for you. Knowing who you are in Christ. Knowing God and knowing who you are in Christ. Knowing the Son will get you everything you need right here, right now. I, I just so pray that the peace of God so take your understanding that what we're how we're trying to understand things, we would cast it aside for this knowledge and wisdom of God is power. It is absolute power. And the authority of our Christ will go before us in all things, in our family, on our job, with whatever it is that we set our hand to, the Lord is here. He is with us. The knowledge, the wisdom, everything that you need is right here in Christ. Trust him today because the Lord, I'm telling you, he truly is our life. Let him be your life today. I want to see you as, I want to see you, I want to see me, I want to see us meet Christ in the air. Draw near to God today. And, and understand the table is ready. My last word is, the king is coming. Let him find faith in you. Right now. Today. I love you all. Bye-bye.